Okay, so we're moving on to section 5.2, which is all about designing experiments. Um, in the last section 5.1, we were talking about how to conduct a sample. Now we're going to talk about how to actually do the experiment once you have a sample. Um, like last section, this is going to have a bunch of definitions. So I've tried to put all the definitions in green. So you'll see a lot of things written in green throughout this whole uh, lesson. Also, like last time, we talked about a bunch, a bunch of different sampling designs, ways to actually conduct a sample. Now we're going to talk about lots of different experimental designs, ways to actually conduct an experiment. And I'm going to, unlike last time where I gave you a big list of sampling designs, now I'm going to kind of scatter those all the way through this presentation. So let's get started. First vocabulary word is something called experimental units, and that's just the individuals, the individuals in the experiment. If you're doing an experiment on actually and you're like conducting an experiment on dogs or lab rats, the experimental units would be the actual dogs you're using or the actual rats you're using. If you're doing some experiment on, you know, pesticides, um, keeping pests <coughs> off tomato plants, <coughs> excuse me, the experimental units are the tomato plants. If the experimental units are people, we don't use the term experimental units, we use the term subjects. So subjects just means experimental units that are people, that are people. And the next big term is treatment. Uh, treatment is what you do to an experimental unit. It's what the experiment is sort of all about. So what you do deliberately, you, you do deliberately to an experimental unit. For example, if you're doing an experiment uh, on do different kinds of uh, suntan lotion work better, and you have, give people a bunch of suntan lotion and you say, you know, try them all, see which one works better, the treatment is the suntan lotion. If you're doing an experiment on lab rats where you feed them lots of things and see if they develop tumors, what you feed them, the chemicals, is the treatment. Um, if you do an experiment on uh, people and you ask them to you know, complete a math problem while chewing gum. Chewing gum is the treatment because it's what you're, uh, what you're ch changing every time. Okay, so I kind of rushed through uh, treatments just a second ago. Now let's talk a little bit in kind of more detail about this. And we have a couple of vocabulary words now. We've got the term factor, level, and treatment. So let me just kind of come up with a couple silly examples here. My first example is going to be um, an example involving bug repellent. So basically imagine bug repellent. Okay, imagine you have uh, different kinds of bug repellent that you think are going to make mosquitoes bite a person less. So let's for say you actually have two different types of bug repellent, which we're going to call just for simplicity uh, A and B. Okay, um, and you want to see which one's better. In this case, this experiment has one factor, and the factor is the actual bug repellent. The factor bug repellent, bug repellent has two levels, which are in this case A and B, and the treatment is every possible combination of all levels, which in this case there are just two treatments. Okay. So factor is kind of uh, what the explanatory variable is. If explanatory variable is the level are the specific values of that, and the treatments are all possible uh, combinations, all possible combinations of levels. Now in this example, that was kind of you're saying, well, what's the difference between level and treatment. Let me give you a more complex example, okay? So let's say that you have, uh, you're doing an experiment on uh, tomato plants, and you want to test both the fertilizer and you want to also test the water level, okay? So actually this experiment has, and you're going to vary those things, and then you're going to measure how tall the tomato plants are, okay? Well, in this case, this experiment has two factors which we would say one of the factors is fertilizer, 
and one of the factors is water. Now each of these can have varying different levels. In this particular one, fertilizer, we're going to say, has three levels, because actually there's three different kinds of fertilizer we're going to test. We're going to call those A, B, C. Water actually has just two levels. Because it turns out we're going to measure, we're going to do a extra heavy water and then regular water. Okay, so how many treatments does this experiment have? The answer is actually six treatments. Because it's all possible combinations of these three and these two. Okay, and you could actually kind of, so it's basically, it's the idea it's two times three equals six. And we could actually list them all. It would be A heavy, B heavy, C heavy, A regular, B regular, C regular. Okay, so with an experiment just with one factor, the treatments and the levels basically are mean the same thing. But if an experiment has two factors and it's more complicated, then the treatments is every possible combinations of levels of the variables. And you'll see that in a little bit. So now we're getting into our first kind of experimental design. And I want to compare this to what we did last time talking about sampling designs. Sampling designs were how you actually picked a sample. Now we're talking about how you actually, once you have that sample, run the whole experiment. And the first kind of experimental design we're going to talk about is something called a randomized comparative experiment. And by the way, we're only going to have about three different types of experimental designs. And this is probably the most common one we're going to talk about. So this picture kind of outlines what we do. We usually do talk about it in a picture. So the first thing you do is you start to think about your population. Okay? And then you take your population. What is your population? And then you take a sample. Okay? And we talked last section about exactly how this arrow works. There's lots of different ways you can take a sample. Almost always you'll do it using an SRS. Okay? So let's just say for simplicity here that your sample is of size 100. Okay? What you would then do is you would split that sample, in this case into two groups, okay? which I'm going to call group number one and group number two. Now why do we have two groups? It's because we have two treatments. If you had three treatments, you'd split it into three groups. If you had ten treatments, you'd split it into ten groups. Okay? So think about these two groups. Each one would be n equals 50 because there's 50 people in each group. Okay? So you basically you would start with your entire population of all people. You'd pick a hundred people, probably randomly using a simple random sample. Also randomly you'd put 50 people in group one, 50 people in group two. And then what would you do with that? You would give the 50 people in group 1 mosquito repellent A, the 50 people in group B mosquito repellent B, and actually what they do here is they have a big like aquarium-like thing full of hungry mosquitoes and they make the people put the mosquito repellent on their arm and then stick it inside the tank and then they count up the number of mosquito bites. Okay, But that's really not important. And then you would uh, measure each group, probably you compute the average number of bites for group number 1, average number of bites for group number 2, you would measure that and then compare the difference. Okay, So this is a kind of a typical picture when you do a com randomized comparative experiment. We're going to talk about some of the philosophy of why you actually do it this way. Okay, um, And usually you draw, to explain, you draw this diagram and you kind of list down here the numbers of people in the groups and then you might write a sentence or two saying exactly how you might measure exactly when I write A and B you might go into a little bit more detail. I mean, really what I mean by A here is Give the people, give these 50 people mosquito repellent A, okay? Make, make them stick their hand in this thing and measure the bites. Same thing here. So uh, this picture is important, but often along with the picture is a few sentences kind of down below, okay? Um, let's talk about a more complicated randomized comparative experiment. And here it is. This is a more complicated one. This has to do with the tomato one. Um, so actually, here you might, let's say, for example, you picked a sample that was n equals 60 tomato plants. Okay? Each of these groups would then be n equals 10, and you notice I had to split my sample this time into 10 different, or sorry, to six different groups because I had six different treatments. This means fertilizer A, heavy water, fertilizer B, heavy water, fertilizer C, heavy water, fertilizer A, regular water, and so on and so on. Okay? Um, and then you would basically would compare here. Now notice over here I didn't do the step before of drawing the population, first of all, because I kind of ran out of room, but also technically 
what happens before this line is considered part of your sampling design, how you pick the sample from your population. Everything that happens on this side of the arrow is considered the experimental design. Okay? Because you could actually, how you pick the sample has nothing really to do with what happens once you've picked the sample. Okay? So this is, a, again, it's a randomized comparative experiment, a little more complicated only just because you have more groups, but the diagram is basically still the same. And again, you probably would write a couple sentences explaining what you mean by all this terminology, exactly how you might measure and exactly how you might compare. Okay, we're going to leave experimental design just for a second and talk about a few more vocabulary words. And again, all my vocabulary words are in green. And the first one is something called random variation, or sometimes it's called chance variation. And think about my mosquito repellent example. I think we all kind of know that some people tend to get bit more by mosquitoes. Maybe they're just tastier. Their, their blood or their skin is tastier to mosquitoes. Well, think about that, that randomized comparative experiment. Couldn't it have happened that the 50 people in group A were all in some ways alike in that they were tastier to mosquitoes just by random chance? Okay? That random chance is something we call random variation. Random variation is the name of the idea, the idea that a group can be alike in some way, in some way, due to random chance. For example, if you pick, you know, uh, 10 random Sacred Heart students and you want to basically kind of measure their 100 yard dash time, well, might it happen by random chance that those 10 people you pick are all the 10 fast people on the track team? Right? It could happen, right? Um, the name of the, the idea that that could happen is random variation. Okay? Again, think about my tomato plant example. Could it happen that the 10 tomato plants in group number one all happen to be, just be bigger, hardier, healthier tomato plants? It could happen, and the name of the idea that that could happen is random variation. Okay? Obviously, you really don't want that to happen because then you're not sure whether the treatment or the results, or due to the treatment, or the fact that the people were all fast to begin with, or all tasty to begin with, the tomato plants were all hardy to begin with. So this is actually why you try to make the groups as large as possible, because if your group is as large as possible, the, if you pick 10 Sacred Heart students, could it be that they're all really, really fast? Okay, it could happen. But if you pick 100 Sacred Heart students, the likelihood that they all like, are, have, are runners is really, really unlikely. Same way if you pick two tomato plants, could happen that they're especially healthy or not healthy, but if you pick a hundred tomato plants, the odds are there, there's going to be variation within that group. Okay? But random variation is the name of the idea that a group can all be alike in some way. Next vocabulary word is one I think you probably know, it's something called a control group. And a control group is a group that gets no treatment, that receives no treatment. So in the case of the mosquito repellent one, it would be they get no mosquito repellent. Because actually what you want to compare is, you know, if you say, that, oh my gosh, this mosquito repellent group number one got 100 bites on their arm and group number two got 30 bites on their arm, okay? The question is how many bites <coughs> would someone who got, had no repellent at all get? So often you have a control group, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on, to... Um, help you think about how do lurking variables affect things. And we'll talk about this more later.